Hello, this video is a quick, simple demonstration of using GIS attributes in the field following the process of creating the attributes and their definitions in the office, uploading that into ServeCE, utilizing them, and then importing that through Field to Finish, creating points with the attribute information and labeling them as an attribute block. This demonstration will cover those short steps. We will use just a very minimal amount of information, but you can expand it as much as you need. So let's start with a setup. We have a brand new drawing here. The first thing that I want to look at, take a look at is the database and discuss that. In Carlson Configure, you'll notice that you have a coordinate file format. The normal default is a Carlson alphanumeric, which is suitable for most survey needs. But an additional one that is available here and has been for some time is a CRDB format. We're going to use that CRDB format because that format allows Carlson to collect more information than just a normal northing, easting, elevation, and description as in alphanumeric or numeric. This will store attribute information right in the same CRDB file that can that is linked to the point numbers with the X and Y, Z locations. So we're going to use that. To do that, we are going to just simply start. We have a new drawing here, and we're going to set a coordinate file. And I'm going to put that on new. And it is going to be, I'm going to use this drawing name, gis2f.crdb instead of just crd. And I open that up. If you take a quick look at this, there is no difference from the user's point of view than what you're used to seeing. Point number, northing, easting, elevation, description. All the same Carlson features are available to you. Absolutely nothing changes except the additional information that you get with the GIS attributes. The next step is to define the GIS database settings themselves. Now, throughout this demonstration, I'm going to be using both the survey GIS menu pull-down as well as the full GIS module that is also available. GIS database settings allows you to define a feature file. What you see here is the last one that I had used, so I'm going to hit select. And what we're going to do is create a new GIS feature file. Now, this feature file is going to contain all the features that you're going to need each feature will then have an attribute for it. For example, if you had utility poles that you're going to collect, you could have a utility pole could be a feature. The attributes for that utility pole could be the number of wires, the number of the utility pole, the age of the utility pole, the material that it was built with, and etc. Essentially, you could have a single feature file containing all, all a GIS file, in, in other words, um, containing all the features that you were ever going to use in a company. So you could have just a single company GIS file containing all those features. What we're going to do for this demonstration is I'm going to create a single one, and I'm going to call it utilities. When I do that, it creates a .gis file, utility.gis. We're going to use a single file type database. Now this is the important part. We have an, an option for an output database file. If you use that option, you could store the attributes in one of these formats here, um, or access format or SQLite format. These file type formats are important for use uh, other linear information, importing, exporting shape files, and things like that. We are just going to be using point data. So what we're going to do instead, that's in concert with what we just had done in the previous set, is enable the store read point GIS data to and from SQLite CRDB file. So our feature information and our attribute information will be stored directly in that CRDB as in opposed to any kind of external database. The step after that is to simply define the GIS features and their attributes. So if we go into the same pull down and hit define GIS features, we have a blank database file, a GIS file, and we can start by creating categories. So you can have as many categories as you want, and each category can then have features, and each features can have as many attributes to it as you want. 
So we're going to start just by creating a category, and I'm going to call this Utilities. And within that, I am going to create a new feature. Now, part of this process has some certain naming conventions that end up being very important. This is the first one. The feature name, if you're going to follow this process that I'm explaining here, the feature name needs to be the same as the code name that you're going to be using in Field to Finish. So since I want a short code name, I'm going to just say MH for manhole. So there we have a manhole. Now we're going to add some attributes to that. So one of the attributes I'd like to add is the type of service. So I can create the attribute option here to uh, add in a full name. Now this is handy if you're going to print this out later and so you can have a better explanation of the attribute. We can have a default or not a default. I'm going to consider adding a list. So now the list values, that means you can create a list to pick from, which creates a drop-down menu. So when you're using this in Serve CE later on, you'll have a little drop-down arrow when a manhole is located that gives you the option to select these instead of having to type them in. You can, as a matter of fact, restrict to that list, that list so you can only have those choices and you're not allowed to type anything in. So you can kind of control the uh, process here. Um, as you define these features. So I am going to create a list, and by doing that, I'm first going to create that list. So I hit list values, and then I'm going to add some values. So the type of manhole services that we might have typically would be, say, sanitary. We could have storm. And I'll say we have electric. So as you can see, this creates now a drop-down menu, creating those values in there. Another attribute that we might have is the cover. And this is going to be the shape of the cover. So it could be a round cover or a square cover, like such as that there might be an inlet grate over the top of a storm drain or such like that. You could have bolt down covers for the electric manholes. You can, the, the, the options are endless. I am going to also create a list for the cover. I'm going to follow the same procedure and hit list values for that. And I'm going to add a cover. And I'm just going to say we have a round cover. We have a square cover. So we have a new list, round and square. Now you can continue this process for all the attributes that you might want, all the features that you might want, and there is really no limit to that. The other thing to point out is the geometry options down here. You have the option to make this a point or a polyline. So you can use the same process to create both points and polylines. The polylines, however, will be handled using the other database formats that we pointed out earlier, while the points can be handled through the use of the CRDB file. When you have completed this, you want to make sure you save this feature file and close that out.